Hello, this is Jen from Flavella, and we are doing our tips and tricks webinar and how to use Flavella. So I am going to first start by uh, showing you the UI for Flavella. When you first open the app, I have just created a new account, and this is the screen I'm presented with. This is my flows, and we also have library up here, which will contain any items that I've viewed already. So you'll see one in my library. And we have catalog here, which uh, contains all of the flows that we think are awesome. Uh, and a curated list. We welcome your submissions as well. You can send those to us anytime at info at flowbella.com. We will take a look. And if we like your flow, we will add it to our catalog. All right, so I'm going to go back to the My Flow screen, and I thought it would be great if we created a first flow together. I know some of you have probably done this before, but I just want to go through the process just in case you may have missed something uh, that I'll be showing you. So first we're gonna click on the Create Your Flow button. And really quick, I'm going to switch screens here. This is our template chooser. All right, there is the template picker. And you can choose from a variety of templates. Uh, we have start from scratch. This will give you a blank template. You can also scroll through our list here. Choose from multiple templates. Um, today I am going to choose our spring template. This is one we launched this month, and I think it's really fun, perfect for spring. It's got a cool photos, very colorful and pretty. And I'm gonna switch uh, screen real quick here. And this is the template once it opens up in Flavella. All right. So now that I've opened it, uh, I'm presented with three screens from this template. The first one is spring. It's got some text. It's got a place for your images. And then it's got this beautiful image in background. Um, I'm going to go ahead and replace the image first. I think this is a great way to get started here. And I'm going to pronounce, uh, or I'm going to uh, pop in a doge meme here. Uh, and there we go. Now we've got this image replaced. We've got Doge, if you're familiar with this meme. Uh, and I'm going to replace the text. I've got some open in a text editor on the side here, but I'm going to paste it in. And it looks like it's a little bit too long for this text area. I think I don't really need all of it here, so I'm going to delete some of the text. All right, and I don't really need a title on the screen either, so I'm just gonna delete that using the delete key. You just click to select and hit delete, and then I'm gonna realign it. You'll see the guides showing up here. Uh, those help you align to center. Um, so here you can see on this guide, it's aligning center to the text, this shape here, as well as the center of the page. Uh, and so now that we've got our text box here and a new image, I think I'm going to add a second screen where I'm going to add a video. So I'm going to click the plus button down here below and I'm going to choose, how about this red colored image here and I think I'm just going to put a video on the top. So I'm going to go up to the insert button up here and I'm going to scroll down and click on video. It's going to take me to my browser for my Mac and I've got this video queued up here that I'm going to drop in. It asks me what optimization level I want to use, and I think I'm going to choose medium. It's a pretty small video anyway, so it optimizes very quickly. Um, and it's awfully small, so I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can cover up that text box. You can always delete all of those content items if you want. Just for time's sake, I'm just going to cover them up. Um, and I don't really like this preview image. Uh, I think it's kind of ugly, so I'm going to replace it with a different uh, image here from my my finder. I'm going to use this one of my dog Rigby and there he is and now when I view it um, he will be my preview image. There'll be a little bit little play button over the top and that is how you add a video and update the preview image. 
So another thing that's really fun to do in Flavella is to set links. Um, so I'm going to add a new screen, and I'm going to pick this one. I like the colors in this screen. I'm going to update the title to say, Hi, Rigby. That's the name of my dog. And I'm going to update this image really quick with a picture of him. All right, this one looks good. And there he is. And now I've got this text box here. I think that looks fine. Obviously, you can update the text with whatever you want. I'm going to quickly copy and paste some text um, from my text editor. There we go. And I'm going to add a brand new text box. So to do that, I'm going to go back up to this insert button here, click on text. The text pops up there, but I want it down here. And I'm going to type see my video. And I think it should be white. So I'm going to change that, and I want it to match this font up here. So if I look at this text box, it says it's Museo. So I'm going to change this one to be Museo as well by scrolling down on this text picker here. All right. And I'm going to set this See My Video as a link. So this link is going to go to that screen that I just made that has a video in it. So I'm going to click on Link to Screen. And I'm going to select the screen that has my video. And you'll see that there are multiple transitions here that you can choose from. I personally like uh, slide in. So we'll go ahead and do that and click done. Now, I, but the only thing is I don't really like the order of my screens anymore. I think I want my, this screen to come before my video. So down here below where you can see the preview of your screens, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this screen ahead of the video one. And I don't really need these. These just were already here and I don't like them. So I'm going to delete those. You can do that by just quickly uh, control clicking or right clicking depending on your settings on your Mac. And now I've got my, uh, my first screen, my second screen, and my third screen. And I've set links from this screen to this screen. And that is how you add a link. So up next, I am going to show you how to duplicate a flow. So first, before I do that, I want to post this flow so that we can talk about how you can set a flow to be able to be duplicated and edited by somebody else. So first, I'm going to title this Doge. And I'm going to say that anyone can see it because there's no confidential information here and I don't mind sharing it. And I'm going to click on the allow others to duplicate and edit and click next. This will share. So it'll just take a second while it uploads all of the photos and videos that I've added. And now I have shared my flow. So really quick, I'm going to switch screens here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so this is going to take you back to the My Flow screen. And here I have my flow. I'm going to right click or control click depending on your Mac settings. And I'm going to click on duplicate. And that will make a second copy of that flow that I just made. And the reason I like to duplicate my flows is if I've created something that I think I might reuse over and over again. Uh, this is really a great way to make a quick and easy template with your brand. Um, if you have something that you make frequently, like a weekly report, you can quickly and easily just duplicate your original, make some edits and some updates, and repost it without altering the first flow that you are duplicating from. Um, and we also allow you to duplicate from a, uh, a flow in your library. If somebody has shared something with you that is uh, duplicate, that uh, they have set allow for duplication and edit, um, then you can go ahead and duplicate that one as well. So on this, I'm going to open this flow. Oops, we'll just open that again. All right, and I'm going to switch my screen so you can see what I'm doing here. 
Sorry, Google Hangout on Air doesn't exactly make this super simple. Um, so here is the pair, here is the flow. All right, and if you're looking in the upper right here, you'll see this little arrow. When you roll over it, it says save a copy to my flows. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now there's a little toast alert that's come up and it says flow copy. The flow you just copied can now be found in your flows. So I'm gonna switch screens again here. All right, and I'm gonna go back to my flows, and now you can see that I have Paris uh, copy in my flows, and I can go ahead and open this and edit it if I so choose, which is really convenient. Um, this is a great way to be sh to share and collaborate with your coworkers, your schoolmates, um, friends and family. You can take a flow that you've allowed for duplication and editing, and you can create a new version, share it with your friends and family if you want. Um, it's also a great way to share kind of a company-wide template, um, just like, I just like I was talking about earlier with a weekly report, you can share it with your coworkers. They can create a, a version from that as well um, and be able to reshare that uh, with everyone. So that is duplicate and edit in a nutshell. And um, another tip that I wanted to talk a, a little bit about, it's something that we have that, that our users will ask occasionally, um, is about backgrounds. And so I'm gonna switch my screen here again. Sorry about this. Google Hangout uh, is a little cumbersome when it comes to screen sharing. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this flow that I made already. I'm gonna make a brand new blank screen this time though. Um, and so what I wanna show you is how to set a background color. Uh, it's actually really, really easy in our Mac app. It's a little bit different on the iPad, um, but for Mac app, you just hit change canvas color, comes up with this color picker, and there you go. You can choose any color you want, um, and it just automatically sets the color there. On iPad, and you can do this in the Mac too, um, you'll just have to select a shape first. So you select a shape, I always go with a square, it's just easier that way. You set it uh, to be the size of your screen, and then you can click and edit the color um, using the color picker. So multiple colors here, you can do any color you want. Now if you're going to, if you want a background image, um, you're gonna have to pull in an image from wherever, you can just click and drag. So I'm grabbing this picture of Rigby, and I, what I do to make it really easy is we have these snap guides that just kind of snap when you're resizing uh, to the size of your screen. We also, though, have these little, uh, the width and height pickers. You can type numbers in, and I'll just give you a tip. You can type in 1024 or 748, depending on the width and height. So if you have a landscape image, you're probably just gonna wanna type in the height to be 748, it'll automatically scale. Or if you were pulling in an image that is more of a uh, vertical image, you would type in 1024 so that it went to the, the width um, of your screen. And then once it's, once it's the size you want, you can click and drag and align it with those snap guides so it is centered in your canvas here. And so that is how you set a background image or a background color in Flovella for Mac. So another fun tip that I like using a lot, um, we use this in our templates, you can see this here for instance, uh, is opacity. So this is a shape and the shape has some opacity so that you can see that background image behind it. I'm gonna show you how to do that though on a brand new screen. So we've got this image of Rigby. His face is kind of, you know, he has some dark spots on his face, So, but I wanna add text to the very center. So I'm gonna add a new text box and we'll say, hi Rigby, and it's a little small, so I'm gonna make it quite a bit larger. I'm gonna type in 150 and I'll rescale this a little bit. And now it's kind of hard to see because the black of the text kind of blends in with his eyes here. 
So one way that I like to fix that issue is to grab a shape. Uh, you just go up to insert and shape. Choose a shape. I like the square. Go ahead and center it here and then drag it across or do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to look just like this. You can get creative. Um, and then I'm going to change it to white. And now when I'm looking at the colors, there's a little bit, there's a little opacity picker at the bottom. And I'm going to type in 50%. And it changes the shape to be opaque, which is nice because then now I can set this shape behind my text layer and it's much easier to read the text. And I can mess around with my text and realign it here if I so choose, um, but I think I like it how it is there. And so that is how you set opacity to a shape. I am going to also show you guys how to uh, create a navigation bar. We've talked a little bit about this on our blog um, somewhat recently, but it's something we've gotten a lot of questions about. People want to kind of uh, make a, a website out of their flow or have the navigation of uh, similar to what they could make with a website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this screen so that I'm not starting from scratch. And I'm going to move this uh, this um, white bar down to the bottom here, and I'm going to align it so it's centered. But I'm going to make it a lot smaller. Um, so I'm going to make my text box smaller as well. I'm going to move it down, and I'm going to align it center here with this uh, with the shape. And now I'm going to set this high Rigby. Why don't we do this one here and I'm going to choose set screen link and now it's linked and I'm going to add another text box. I'm just going to copy and paste for time's sake. It's a little bit easier to do it that way I think than the styles are all exactly how you want it. Um, I'm going to type in video because we have a video here and I'm going to center align this text box. All right, and then I'm going to link this to my video screen, which is this red one here. Okay, and then I'm going to add one more that links off. Let's see, how about my uh, very first spring screen? We'll just add it here at the end. Click on it, add a link up here with this little link button, and select the spring screen. Hit done, and that is how you create a navigation bar. So just in a few seconds, you could create something that's pretty awesome, uh, just you know, navigating in between the screens of your flow. And if you change your, if you decide you want this screen first, like I showed you before, you can just drag this one over to be the very first screen, and then it kind of acts as a home page, if you will, um, where you're linking off to screens in your flow. Uh, very quickly and easily so your viewer can quickly navigate to whatever they're coming to look at your flow for. All right. So uh, that is it in terms of our, our tips that we'd like to share with you. Um, but I do want to take some time for questions and answers. Um, if you have, if there are, is time at the end, I have a few other things I can show you as well, but I do want to make sure that we have plenty of time for those question and answers if you have any of them. I'm going to make our Q&A show up here. And feel free to, answer, to ask any questions you have um, in that Q&A. If I don't see anything right away, I will just continue showing you some more uh, tips and tricks. So I'll just give you a moment here. You can type in our questions and answers area. Uh, it should show up in your screen on the right side there. If it's not showing up, uh, we'll hope for the best.
All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions yet, so I am going to continue showing you how to do a couple of other things that we haven't talked about yet. Um, I'm gonna go back to talking about links for a minute here. Um, so I'm gonna take you back to this screen, and I'm gonna make this text box a little bit smaller, and that gives me some room to add a new link. So I'm going to type in my website, and I'm going to make this text box much smaller. All right, and I'm going to link this off to a website. I'm just going to type in flavella.com here, click that. pretty much anywhere from your flow. Um, this also works the same on iPad as well. It just op pops open an in-app browser, so it'll work on both apps. And let's say I want to add a contact me link. So I'm gonna type contact me, and then I am going to select that text box, and I'm gonna clear the link. I copied and pasted, so it's just remembering those uh, the functionality from the last uh, link I added. This time I want to link to an email address. I'm just going to type in the Flavella one, info at flavella.com, and click done. Now whenever one of your viewers clicks on the contact me button, that will then pop open an email, an email app, uh, whatever is default on their computer or iPad. Um, so they can just shoot you a quick email, which is really nice. So that is how, that, th those are a couple more ways you can add links um, to make your flow a little more interesting and uh, in depth. Now, there's one more feature that uh, I haven't really talked about yet that I'd like to share, and that is our gallery functionality. Um, and so I'm just gonna start with a brand new screen. Um, let's just go with a blank one. So I'm going to insert a gallery. I uh, just go up to insert and then click on gallery, click choose the images down here. And I'm going to select a couple of images that I have here in my folder and I click open and they all come up here. I'm going to click on done and it'll load one of my images as the gallery uh, main screen, which is really nice. Now something about galleries is if you want to go back and edit your gallery, you can do that by clicking this edit your gallery button up here. It looks like a stack of cards kind of splayed out. Just click on that. And if you'd like to delete any of these images, let's say I changed my mind and I don't really want the Doge meme in here. I'm gonna click delete and that automatically deletes that from your uh, screen. So just use those keystrokes on your, on your keyboard. And then click done and that'll just update here. Um, if you'd like, you can also change the preview image that you're using. You can set it to something completely different if you'd like, or you can choose an image that you just added. Um, I think I like this one, though, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, and that's how you add a gallery. And obviously, you can resize your gallery. You can move it around. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, but it's a convenient way to add multiple slides if you want um, or multiple images without taking up too much screen real estate. It looks like we have a question. Uh, is there a way to have a navigation bar box start small and become more visible when it's clicked on? Thought I saw that somewhere. So at this present time, we don't really have a way for a navigation bar um, to grow. Um, we don't really have a rollover or a mouse hover effect. Um, with our with any of our features of Flovella. Um, I do think that's a really interesting idea and it's definitely something we could explore in the future and add um, a future in a future version. Uh, when I said become more visible, I meant with more info navigation options showing. So again, we don't really have that as an option yet. Um, you can definitely, I mean, you can kind of fake it by creating a, a sub slide um, that it could navigate to, but we don't have a drop down uh, menu concept. We just have the shapes that overlay 
and we have the you know text boxes you can create images um, but we don't have any drop down functionality or mouse hover effects at this point in time those are great ideas though we definitely will talk about that um, as maybe being something that we add in the future All right. Well, thank you so much for your question, Kim. I sure appreciate that. And is there are there any other questions that I can answer? Um, we do. I mean, I have. I can show you a few more things if you'd like. Um, but I obviously want to answer any questions that are out there first. All right, we have another question. Sorry if this was asked and answers. I answered. I can't seem to delete a gallery. Okay, so if you have a gallery, um, so I guess a secondary question is, are you trying to delete an individual image um, from your gallery or the gallery as a whole? Um, so for this one, I'll so I'll just show you on my screen here. This I created this gallery just a second ago. Um, if I want to delete the gallery as a whole, I can just hit the delete key and it will delete from the screen. Um, if and then I'm going to quickly undo it so it'll pop back here. Um, if you want to delete a, a, a section, a, an image that's within your gallery, you go up to this icon here called Edit Your Gallery. It kind of looks like multiple images stacked. You click on that, and then the Edit Gallery Viewer pops up, um, and you can just select any of your images. You can select multiple if you want. Just hit Command, um, and then it'll allow multiple select. And you hit the Delete key on your keyboard, and that will remove those images from your gallery. Uh, so now we just have a gallery of one. If you want to add more images at this point in time, maybe you have some outdated slides you need to update or some outdated images, you can delete those and you can quickly just add new ones the same way we did before. Then click done and they all will can live within this gallery here. So um, yeah, so again, to delete a gallery image or to delete a gallery object as a whole, just select the object, and this goes for any object in Flovella. You just select the whole box, and then click the delete key on your keyboard, uh, and then that will remove it. On iPad, you can you just click on the, the object and click the delete icon that shows up um, on the object itself. That will delete it as well. Okay, and I hope that answered your question, Jay. Uh, he just mentioned that it was the entire gallery he was looking to delete. Um, let us know if you have any problems deleting the gallery. Uh, we're here to help, and you can just, if anyone ever has any support questions, you can email us at support at flovella.com. That is, we're here all the time, and we'll answer you as quickly as we can. All right, and it looks like we have another question from Greg. I haven't used Flavella yet, so is there a way to lock the presentation so no one can edit it? So for this, if um, if there if you don't want your presentation editable, just don't check the box. Um, when you're sharing that says allow for du duplicate and edit. If you've already done that before, it's no problem. You can go ahead and um, just unselect it. And it looks like it's not showing up on my screencast here. So let me, uh, let me just switch screens for you so you can actually see it. My apologies for this. I don't, I wish it would just show the entire screen. Uh, All right, so on Share Your Flow, 
when that screen pops up after you've clicked on post um, and you you choose on your you choose your privacy so you have anyone can see it need a link to see it and only I can see it if you've selected anyone can see it or any of the options just make sure that allow others to duplicate and edit is not selected so no check in that box and again if you've already posted it and you've allowed duplication in the past you can just repost your flow uncheck the box and click next it'll go ahead and post it to live again and those settings will be saved so either way you definitely can prevent people from being able to edit your your presentation um, and allowing people to duplicate and edit it does not mean that they will um, edit your original version so that will always be intact it only allows them to create a copy of your flow for them to personally edit on their uh, account um, so again it won't change your original version, just a new one. Hope that answers your question, Greg, and I'm going to move on to a uh, question about is SVG format supported? Unfortunately, no, we do not support SVG at this point in time. Um, we're always trying to make improvements to Flovella, and that is something we will definitely consider adding support for in the future. Um, so thank you for that question. All right, and we have one more question here from Kim. How is Flavella usage calculated based on the current size of a flow or based on what's uploaded during a month? So Kim, uh, uses, usage is calculated based on what is uploaded for um, the month uh, on a cumulative basis. Uh, so every time you post a flow, uh, you go through that little uh, window that uploads everything those are the items that are counted against your quota um, so and and unfortunately if you have to if you've gone back and deleted an item that was already uploaded in your and went against your quota that that uh, is gone so removing a bunch of stuff will not get you more space if that makes sense it's all items that have been uploaded in that month's time um, and everything resets every month. You can always check on the status of your quota. Um, if you're on the Mac app, you can go up to the account um, and it says your monthly usage and how much you've used and when it will reset. Uh, if you're on the iPad app, the same thing applies. Just open the side menu from the My Flow screen and at the very bottom there is uh, some, it just says basically the same thing how much quota you've used for the month and what day that resets or how many days there are until reset. Hopefully that answers your question. And uh, again, if anyone ever has any questions that they'd like us to answer or things here that didn't make sense, feel free to email us anytime. Our email address is support at flovella.com and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Now I'm just gonna give you one more minute here to ask any last minute questions, and then I think we'll uh, wrap everything up. Uh, so just one more minute here, get your questions in. If you have any, we'd love to hear from you. All right, so it looks like everybody's got their question questions answered. I'm so happy you guys uh, joined us today. Uh, we really appreciate you participating. Uh, and again, I'm so sorry for the technical di difficulties that we ran into earlier. Um, unfortunately, Google on Air Hangouts are brand new to us, so thank you for sticking with us. Um, and you'll be able to access all of this information on YouTube. Uh, you can just click over from our Google Plus account and hit our YouTube channel, and this will be recorded there. So if I went too fast on anything, you will definitely be able to access it later. I appreciate you joining us, and thank you so much for your time. Um, we look forward to a lot of really fun upcoming changes here at Flovella. We're going to be releasing some new versions in the next couple of weeks. Um, some big changes are coming that we're super excited about and we hope you will be as well. So thank you again for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.